There's a rich one. We'll get plenty for their kid once we cut them off. Quickly, I must fight! Let us end this. This battle is out! Now we do battle. Who are you? You don't look like any guardsman I ever saw, and that's not much of a uniform. Oh, you looking for a chance to bring in some coin? Could be I have that opportunity. Especially for someone with a few connections above ground. Uh, no offense, but your kings have some laws that don't make sense in a practical kind of world. Like about who gets to buy and sell Lyrian, the sacred gift the stone provides us to show her love. No law should regulate that. The laws are meant to keep mages away from the stuff, so there's always buyers in the Circle Tower. I got one man, names Godwin. He's expecting a delivery of a stone's weight. You want an investment opportunity? Uh, I could see fit to, say, sell you that lyrium instead, at the reasonable price of 50 sovereigns. You can keep it, or, since you can travel freely from here, sell it to Godwin, who you know is buying. And uh, if you bring back his return order, I could pay you, uh, say, 20 sovereigns as a finder's fee. More so for someone like you, I guess. Most dwarves born down here have a natural immunity. Other races, there are problems if they spend too long with the ore. The real issue is that lyrium's valuable. It's only found down here, and human mages can't work without it. Right, here's the lyrium, then. You, uh, probably don't want to take it out of the box. I'll be waiting for the next order somewhere out of sight. Say, just around the corner. Spare a bit for... Th have you a coin to spare, my lord? It's for my son. He's sick. He hasn't any clean clothes to wear or anything to eat today. Neither have I. Thank you. That a stranger would care so much when my own family barred me from their halls unless I'm willing to... But no! I can't bear to even think of it! My son's father is castless, as is he. I used to be a minor, but my parents stripped my caste and refused to accept me back. Unless I agree to abandon the child in the deep roads and pretend I never bore him. I cannot abandon my baby. The Shapers teach that only children of true lineage exist, not those born castless. But they never carry the child. He cries like any other infant, and smiles when he's warm and full. I can't kill him because of an accident of birth, an accident I forced on him. I thought about that. They say there's no caste up there. That humans don't care about lineage. I've never met a surfacer, though. I, I thought it might not be safe. If it gives my son a chance to live, I will go. Thank you, stranger, for opening my eyes. Perhaps I'll see you next in the light of the sun.
Allow me. I could do that for you. It's done. Right away. Lord Balin suspected a perfect. Locations abound. This is dragged on too long. It's an insult to King Endrin's memory. Sorry, can't talk. A crier's work is never done. Right away. Welcome to Lord Harriman's estate. I heard there was a Grey Warden here. I am Doolin Forender, second to Lord Harrowmont, King Endrin's own choice as successor. Word is spreading that the surface may suffer a blight. It is shameful we are not in a better position to help. That may be, and that is a terrible risk for the surface. But even if the world would end tomorrow, Lord Harrowmont cannot ignore Balin today. He cannot afford to trust anyone of unproven loyalties. That's a generous offer. If you mean it, you might attend the proving today. The Deshers take it very seriously. And unfortunately, Balin found some way to blackmail or intimidate House Harrowmont's best fighters into stepping down. It would certainly make your loyalties loud and clear. Balin would never work with anyone who humiliated him in that way. Haramont would have no fear of meeting with you then. Excellent. The arena is located off the commons. Talk to the Proving Master and tell him you're entering Lord Haramont's roster. The key fighters we lost were Guidon and Beisel. You can look for them in the fighters' preparation chambers behind the ring. And be sure it's before the fights begin. After the first bout, no one may change the roster. If you need to find me again, I will wait in the Tapster's Tavern off the commons. There is no better place to hear gossip. Perhaps even word of your victory.
of the hour. News of the hour. Two more clans endorse Lord Balin as the new king. Change is inevitable, and it must... Very well. Warden, welcome. It is always a blessing for Orzammar to host your order. I am Vartag Gavorn, top advisor to our good Prince Balin. What news do you bring? Yes, the treaty. I've seen it in the Shaper's libraries. Now the difficulty is, that the treaty only compels our king, and we are sadly lacking one of those right now. My prince is the rightful king, but a disappointing number of lords back the upstart Haramond for the throne. If you show your support for Prince Balin, he might be able to assist with your requests. You must understand, Haramond hides behind his good reputation while sending spies and assassins. Balin can't know who to trust. It's been like a knife in the heart for Balin to see so many of his father's men stand with the usurper. Haramont has engaged in a campaign of bribery and coercion to ensure that every house serves him. But if a neutral party, a stranger, were to approach certain key members, perhaps with irrefutable evidence of Haramont's deception, Irrefutable evidence, which I suppose you have? I'm certain my Lord Prince would show his gratitude. Haramond promised the same portion of his estate to two different Deshers, Lady Dace and Lord Helmy. Haramond can't possibly grant it to both of them, but they won't find out until after the vote is cast. I have copies of the promissory notes Haramont gave each of them. Once they see those, they should both reconsider their votes. Lady Dace doesn't leave the quarter much, but Lord Helmy's adventurous likes to spend his time at Tapsters in the Commons. Remember, don't tell them you got these papers from me. You learned of them and drew your own conclusions. The assembly is in session. Enter quietly if you wish to observe. Your mind has gone to dust if you think we would pass such a writ. Half our houses would go broke without the surface trade. The proposal is only effective until we have a king to ensure we are respected by the surfacers. Leaving you conveniently positioned to take over all contracts. I'll see your head on a pike first. Deshers, lords and ladies of the assembly. I've already doubled the guard to prevent violence. Must I summon more? Steward Bandalore, Balin's sympathizers are tying our hands with trivialities. They may as well open us to the sky. I suggest we put the matter to a vote. And I suggest you have a taste of my family's mace. Enough! The assembly is in recess until the members can regain control of their emotions. Who would dare take from Orden? I'm outraged. A thief in the Shaperet. What have we been reduced to? I did. He was bald, with the most garish brand across his head. Almost like he took pride in being castless. Imagine. Ah, he's probably in the slum somewhere. 
As if he'd find a buyer for a stolen tome in Dust Town. They couldn't know the value. Oh, um, pardon me. Were you looking for a particular volume? Not that I could really help. I, um, don't know the libraries very well. I'm just doing some research. I was looking for something about the Orton Taig. It was lost during the last blight, and there aren't many records left. They were a noble house once, descended from the Paragon Orton, who composed the grand epic of the Seven Brothers and the Ortonic Symphony. My mother's family believes they were descended from Kalana Orton, who was training in Orzammar when the Taig fell. I'm even named for the house, Orta. Unfortunately, any records would be buried in the Taig's ruins, somewhere in the deep roads. A Grey Warden? Mother always said that if anyone could find the Taig, it was the Wardens. I hear Prince Balin and Lord Harrimont have both been sending out small teams these days. Yes, if you can find the Taig in any records, that could do it. That could prove I'm a noble. If you could, maybe now that you're looking, it's almost too much to hope. When I last walked this hall, Endrin was king and Orzammar was at peace. The memories often speak of the swiftness with which change overtakes us. But it is different to see it firsthand. I apologize, Warden. I should not burden a stranger with such thoughts. I am Zebor, the Shaper of Memories. The Grey Warden's visit has been recorded in the memories, along with all who accompany you. These are Harrowmont lands promised here. But these are not the deals we approved at the Shaperit. Where did you get these? Whom are you protecting? It is a crime against the Shaperit to falsify legal documents. Not entirely. There were two promised deals. But their terms differed significantly from what is presented here. It appears the scripter altered the dates and locations of the agreements to make them identical. You are an outsider, Warden. But not outside the law. I hope you will not do anything to challenge the stability of Orzammar. Well, have you found Lady Dace and Lord Helmy? Forged? Well, naturally they're forged. There is no legal way for Harriman to sell the same land twice over, is there? I didn't ask you to find out the paper's history. What I recall asking was whether you would prove your loyalty to Balin. These forgeries reflect badly on Lord Harriman. So unless you care about his reputation, I can't say I see your concern. Now, where does your allegiance lie, Warden? If you cannot support my prince, do not expect him to serve you. If you change your mind, you know what you must do to earn his indulgence. Ah, you return, Warden. Is there more you would know from Orzammar's memories? That is an odd request, especially for one so new to our city. I thought so. This is not the first time he's made this plea. My answer to Brother Burkel hasn't changed. So I ask you the same. On what basis would you have me insult the ancestors and overturn two thousand years of tradition? What sort of charities do you mean?
I am not certain this is in Orzammar's best interests. Our castes have served us well, but it's possible this service could benefit our people. Very well. He may hold a prayer meeting as he requested, if not build a new temple to his god. At least the words would come from one of our own. Now, is there anything more? We were a great empire once, outnumbering even humans and elves. We traded with your Tevinter Imperium, and our land stretched as far in the deep roads as theirs did above. Cal Chirac was capital then, but we lost too many battles. We lost our golems, and we lost our territory. Now the Empire is simply ruined tunnels filled with darkspawn. They were once our highways beneath the mountains. Now the darkspawn claim them and few venture there, except your order, who enter the deep roads when they retire, so they can die slaughtering as many darkspawn as possible. The Paragon Caradon, a smith of unsurpassed genius, invented the golems. For years they were our weapon against the darkspawn. One golem is worth a dozen dwarves in battle, but Caradon's tig is far into the deep roads. When it fell, we lost his secret to creating golems. There are books about it along these walls, if you would read more. They are to us what a colony is to surfacers. At the other side of the old empire, during the last blight, the kings of Orzammar knew they couldn't hold everything. They sealed the deep roads, abandoning everyone still trapped in far-flung settlements. It was the only way to survive. Cal Chirac is the only other city to outlast the Blight. We only rediscovered them recently, and they still haven't forgiven us. Your presence here has been recorded in the memories. I wish I knew what significance it has.